So today we begin a new liturgical year. The church has different seasons, which underlines different aspects of the spiritual life. So just a few questions for the children. What season are we in now? Are we in Christmas? Are we in Lent? What season are we in? Christmas. Or? Advent. Right, you're right. Advent. We're in Advent. And so as you know, we'll light the Advent wreath soon. Each candle is one Sunday. We'll light the first candle today. And that means we're coming closer. Advent is a time of preparation. Preparation, what are we preparing for with Advent? What are we waiting for? What's coming? Jesus' birth. Exactly. We're waiting. We're preparing for Jesus. It's a preparation for the coming of the Lord. And so we have an interesting gospel because it's true. This season is a time for us for preparing for the Lord because we know he's coming. He came the first time in simplicity, humility, poverty, and he's coming again. He'll come again with glory and majesty. And so we know that he's coming, and so we have this time to prepare for his coming. This gospel is talking about signs in the sun, the moon, the stars. The nations will be in dismay. People will die of fright. There'll be cosmic disasters. And yet it says all of that is a preparation. It's coming before the coming of the Son of Man, who will come in glory and power. And so the gospel tells us to be attentive, to be vigilant, to be ready. And so this word of God, we can ask, is this something that's already happened? Is this word of God already fulfilled? Or is this word of God something a prophecy for the future, speaking about something that will come? Or is this word something that's being fulfilled now? And we know that the answer is yes. That the word of God is something that's already been fulfilled. The word of God is something that will be fulfilled. The word of God is something that is being fulfilled. And so we see that this came true Jesus said it would come true within his generation, within one generation. And in 70 AD, the temple, which was the most important thing, it was the center, it was the foundation of the religious life. For the Jewish people, there's nothing more important. The temple was in Jerusalem. The temple was where God was present, where they could have an encounter with God. And there was an immense drought. There was wars. And the Romans came in and destroyed the temple. They burned it to the ground, and they took people away as slaves. A huge disaster, huge chaos. The stars and sun came crashing down. And yet, that was necessary to usher in something completely new, something unexpected. This was to usher in Christianity. This was to usher in the kingdom. Jesus Christ came to start the church. And so... All of the things that were most important, most fundamental, came crashing down. But it was so that something new could arise. God was doing something. And so the Christians knew this prophecy. And so they weren't caught off guard. They weren't surprised. They were expecting it. They were able to escape the tribulations because they knew that all of it, God was bringing something new. They had their eyes focused on Jesus Christ. And so... It came true. This word was fulfilled. It's also talking about the end of time. And so the church says, Jesus said, things will get worse. Evil will increase. Nation will fight nation. And there will be earthquakes. And there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And everything that's fundamentally important, will be shaken, will come crashing down to the ground. But once again, all of this is so we know. It's so that Jesus Christ can usher in a new kingdom, so that he can usher in a new heaven and a new earth, so he can come with salvation to bring his kingdom. And so it says, when these signs begin to happen, stand erect, raise your heads, 
because your redemption is at hand. We know that he's coming. He's coming with power and glory. And so we can escape the tribulation. We don't have to be full of anxiety because we know that these things must happen first. That the things that people hold as most important, most fundamental, will come crashing down so that a new kingdom can arise, a, kingdom, a new heavens and a new earth. And so this word will be fulfilled. But as always with the word of God, this word of God is being fulfilled today. This word is also for us today. And so, maybe in our lives, something that we hold as most fundamental, most important, is where we're looking for our security, our life, our happiness. Maybe right now it's coming crashing down. Maybe there's an earthquake happening in our lives, in your job, in your family, in your personal life. How do we understand what's happening? How do we interpret the events? And so this gospel also comes to help us. It says, when these signs begin to happen, stand erect, raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. These things must happen first. These things must come first, so that we may see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. These are signs to us that he's coming to save us. These are signs to us that he's coming to redeem us. They're inviting us, as it says, to have our head erect, to look at God, to look at Jesus Christ, because he's the one that's faithful. He's the one that's true. He's the one that's eternal. He's the one that's divine. He's the one that comes to save us. And so everything else that we're somehow looking for for security, that we're anking our lives, these things must come down. And God perhaps is helping us so that we can focus on what doesn't pass away, focus on what does give us happiness, focus on what does give us fulfillment. And so that helps us to live in these times. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life. We can be distracted. We can sleepwalk through our life. We can be caught up with the anxieties of daily life. That this is what we're preoccupied with. This is what we're focusing on. This is what we're looking at. And said, so be careful. Be attentive. Be alert. Because your life is much more important. Much greater things are happening. For that day will assault everyone. No one can escape. It's something that everyone must pass through. Who lives on the face of earth. Be vigilant at all times. And pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent. And to stand before the Son of Man. And so he is coming. He is our rock. He is our foundation. He is our hope. He is our life. He is our happiness. And these readings are inviting us to focus on him. In the first coming, as I said, Jesus Christ came in simplicity and humility. As he comes to us today, he comes to us in the sacraments. He comes to us through his word in a, in a way very humble, very poor, very simple. And we have this time to open ourselves up to him. We have this opportunity to allow him to enter into our lives to allow him to love us as we are, to allow him to be in communion with us, so that by being one with him now, by receiving him now, by allowing him into our lives now, this is what prepares us, so that when he does come with power and glory and majesty, we already know him. We're already in communion with him. We're already with him. And it doesn't catch us off guard, because We've lived our life attentive, alert, awake. And so in this Eucharist, Jesus Christ is coming to us. Jesus Christ is entering into our lives. Let us take advantage of this season of Advent. Let us take advantage of this time of grace and open our, our lives up to him so that we can receive him. We can welcome him because he does come to bring in the kingdom. He comes to save us. He comes to give us the happiness we're looking for.